Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new vlog, finally. It's been like, what, two weeks since I uploaded my last vlog, maybe longer? Yeah, I think about two weeks, but I am jumping in at the start of this video from the future, technically from the past by the time this is being posted, but from the future of the rest of this vlog. So the clips that you're about to watch were literally filmed like two weeks ago. As I was filming this video, I wanted this video to be a like wardrobe switch over. So showing you how, um, basically getting rid of all the summer out of wardrobe and putting all the autumn goodness in. As it happened, as I was halfway through filming the video, I became very ill very quickly. So the first few clips that you see of this video, I was kind of, I was okay. I was starting to feel a little bit ill, but nothing that, you know, I didn't have to stop filming for. So yeah, just wanted to basically explain because then I'll be picking up the vlog again right now. One of the things that I am, um, really quite gutted about though um, and I just wanted to give you an update I know not everyone cares and but I'm just updating you because obviously it is my life but me and Flickr were due to compete in our championship that we qualified for now the worst days of my sickness were sort of the I'd say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, literally like the weekend. I was due to compete on the Saturday. So on the Friday morning when I got up, I had had dressage training scheduled for that morning. I didn't cancel it. I went to it thinking, no, I'll battle through. I'll be fine. I can push myself through and then I'll rest the rest of the day, hopefully feeling well enough to compete the next day. That didn't quite go to plan. So during my lesson, I pretty much blacked out. Like I went really dizzy. I, I felt awful and i went really dizzy i kind of blacked out for a couple of seconds and my instructor just took one look at me and said alex get off you need to go home so anyway i ended up going home and thinking yeah i'll just rest all day i was very 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 ill we i ended up having to ring the emergency like 111 it was just yeah it was a time still semi-determined at this point that no i'll feel okay tomorrow and i'm i'm well enough to compete yeah and then i woke up the next morning and pretty much took one look at andy and burst into tears because i knew that i knew that i just wasn't well enough i knew that i, I, I didn't have the energy to I, honestly get him from upstairs to my bed to down on the sofa in here wore me out i was sweating i was exhausted how on earth i thought i would have half a chance of driving to the yard getting a horse bathed and ready and platted up loading up the horse box with all of the stuff putting her on the horse box driving two hours and then competing for about four hours it just wasn't going to happen so it was very, it was a very upsetting day, I'm not going to lie. And there were a lot of tears shed and I know full well that, you know, people like content creators, people online, whenever people speak about anything they've been upset about or, you know, a first world problem, people often like to point it out. But yes, I know there are worse things going on in the world, guys, than me being ill and not being able to ride my pony, I'm fully aware. But it's just one of those gutting things that, you know, I obviously I'm very passionate about what I do. You know, I, I love competing with Flickr. I've got, you know, we've been in such a good place and I was absolutely over the moon to just qualify. I just felt like I'd let us down a little bit. Just that, you know, we'd, we'd work so hard and I do work really hard with her and we do, you know, we put in the training, we really put in the hours, the money, the time, everything. You know, I, I don't show a lot. Um, an awful lot of what I do because I think it's not interesting to 99% of you but I am up every day at the crack of dawn I am training she's so fit at the minute she's literally competition fit and yeah I'm really proud of how far we've kind of come together already so it was I just felt like it was my not my fault but I just felt like oh, it's me that's letting us down you know we are a team when we go out and compete and She's fit and ready and I was just so gutted that I had to withdraw because I wasn't feeling well. And honestly, if it had been a case whereby I felt like I could have just dosed up and just got through it, I would have. But it was so bad that I couldn't. But I know a lot of you guys are honestly aren't here for that content, but I just thought I'd update you because I know I had mentioned it in my vlogs that we'd qualified and that I was so happy. But yeah, 
everything happens for a reason. I do also believe in just rotten bad luck, but I'm gonna look at it as everything happens for a reason with this one. You know, we might have gone down, I might have had a fall, she might have got injured. One reason or another, we weren't supposed to be there that day, so that's what I'm sticking with to make myself feel slightly better. But the week before the championship, we did actually go to another event and she was just fantastic. And I think that was kind of what made it so even more upsetting because she's on such good form at the minute. She's feeling amazing. She's really enjoying it. As am I, we're both really enjoying it. So yeah, guys, unfortunately, I just thought I'd give you that little update and let you know it wasn't meant to be this time. So yeah, sad times. But anyway, I'm gonna... Um, jump into this video so the clips you're about to see were filmed a couple of weeks ago and then i will reconvene with you well i've just looked out the window and it is the most gorgeous misty morning really feels like autumn today so nice over the fields Well, thankfully, the mist has cleared a little bit this morning and the sun is shining. And I'm just on my way down now to grab a little Miss Flicker out of the field. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, all the ponies saying good morning to me. Hello. Good morning. You are so gorgeous. Good morning. Hello, darling. Are you waiting? Are you waiting by the fence to come in? So, oh, you're hiding behind me now. You didn't want to say good morning. <laughs> now you're hiding. She's not had a chance to do a skincare or put a makeup on yet, so she's a little bit camera shy. Are we going in, sweetheart? Here she is. She's looking a little bit scruffy this morning. Have you had a fun night? Have you been partying? Been partying in the field. I think she's been rolling in the mud because now we've had some lovely rain. The ground's nice and muddy, isn't it, darling? And I can see you've got it all up your legs. So that's gonna be fun this morning, brushing you off. I don't want to go with a freshly clipped horse. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, should I just wait it out? switch over i'm hoping to do it today basically what that is is i'll put all my summer stuff away so summery dresses the light sort of like linen shirts and trousers and i venture into the loft and get out all of my thick heavy winter jackets and coats i don't keep everything i own in the wardrobe all at once because obviously things like jackets and coats are so big and take up so much room and they're just kind of a bit pointless for half the year 
So yeah, that little pile you see there is um, ready for this afternoon's job, but first up, I have showered, I've washed my hair, and now I'm gonna do some skincare, but reason I thought I'd film this is because I've actually got a couple of new products to try, so I thought I'd try them with you this morning and sort of give you my first impressions. Obviously with skincare, I can't say for definite if it's a kind of, you know, if it's worth buying or not, I have to use it for at least, I'd say, a month to see results and things. But first impressions, let's just dive in and I'll show you what I've got. So I have actually been sent these as a new release from Murad. Now Murad is up there, one of my favourite skincare brands. I use a lot of their products. I love their retinol products in the evening. Um, usually in the morning, I use this from them. It's the Murad Vita C um, Dark Circles Corrector. Basically, they're vitamin C eye cream, and I love it. But what I've bought out, and I've got the green um, version of this, um, the retinol version that I use in the evening. But this, they've brought out two new ones. So these are their um, targeted range. So I've firstly got the targeted eye deep puffer, which is that one in the orange box. And then I've also got the targeted pore corrector, which is this one in the blue box. So I thought I'd give both of these a whirl today. I'm gonna start off with the orange one, the eye deep puffer. Now, admittedly, I've not actually got that very sort of puffy eyes. I have been up for a few hours now, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So apply a thin layer around the eyes and gently massage with applicator tip. Let dry before applying moisturizer or SPF. A light reflecting complex brightens as a cooling applicator helps deep puff. Okay, let's give this a little whirl. So this is what it looks like. I'll hold it up there. This is the applicator. So you squeeze the tube for it to come out there. And then you've got the sort of cooling metal applicator there. So yeah, I'm just gonna see, see what this does. Let's move my hair. So I'm gonna squirt a little bit out. God, I nearly, <laughs> I nearly stuck it right in my eye then. I don't think that's how Murad intended for you to use this. And I'm just going to switch it over to the cool side. I'm just kind of, I'm not even like pressing down. I'm just sort of lightly letting it run over my eye. I think I might have put a little bit too much on. <laughs> that feels so lovely and cooling. Oh my gosh, that is so nice. I can definitely imagine first thing in the morning if you're a little bit tired and sometimes I can be a little bit puffy, this would feel so nice. Okay, so that is that all applied. You can see it under my eyes now like that. That feels really nice. It does remind me of the product that I already do use, but it's kind of like a similar consistency um, and similar colour. It's got that brightening effect. But you can see I do feel on my under eyes. Do you feel, um, what's the word? Reflective. And this one, the target, no, the targeted pore corrector, a soft focus complex helps blur and smooth to minimise, to visibly minimise pores. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of this down my nose where I have kind of like my larger pores, either side of my nose here where I've got pores and a little bit on my chin. I think that'll be the best place to use this. Oh, same again with the applicator, but this time it's not got a metal top just ooh, like that. I'm going to try and not put too much on this time. Around my nose. I do like this applicator. Oh, that feels quite soothing. I think I've got a bruise coming on this side of my nose here. Oh, basically, when I was asleep, I, got, I woke up with like a jolt. Basically, Andy in bed had turned over, elbowed me in the face. He stayed sound asleep. I woke up, but my nose was throbbing. Like I had to physically go to the bathroom to check it wasn't bleeding. It was like, you know, you know, have you ever, anyone's ever banged their nose hard? You know, and it kind of all goes tingly and fuzzy. And you're like, oh my God, that's got to be a nosebleed. It wasn't, but the whole of this side is really sore, but this actually feels quite nice, <laughs> quite nice on it. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit either side where I'd usually get my pores. Usually I would kind of put, um, powder here either side to kind of disguise those a bit. I'm gonna have a little close up in the mirror to see what it's looking like. Wow, that has actually made a difference. I was not expecting that. Oh my gosh. 
it almost feels like it's left a tiny silk like veil over my skin oh my gosh i was not expecting that i honestly thought that was just going to be a little bit of a fad i thought is that going to work but oh my gosh that feels so nice really nice really like both of those from your ad lovely okay so as i said usually i'd use this i'm not going to use this today i'm going to see how or should i use a little bit over the top because technically that's a d puffer yeah stuff it i'm going to use a little bit of my vitamin c under my eyes otherwise i feel like i'm not done my skincare properly it's not a fair test i'd be intrigued to see how well the pore corrector sits underneath makeup i want to make sure it doesn't actually interfere with how my makeup sits on my face but yeah that feels lovely now i'm gonna go in with my barrier booster essence from la henriksen just put a bit of my hands and on oh, my face oh i just love the glow this gives oh, can you see that glow and then i've also got a new moisturizer to try from evelon box fresh i don't know what it's called it just says evelon moisture and radiance okay let's get this out of the box and give this a little whirl this is what the box looks like very nice with a gold lid no strong fragrance which is always quite nice okay moisturizer done i'm really happy with how my skin is looking after that little routine i'd say my skin is looking how i would usually like it to look after doing my usual morning routine it's got a nice radiance it doesn't feel dry feels really nice and moisturized and just prepped and ready to crack on get my makeup on and get ready that moisturizer it's it feels really um, quite rich, um, which I like. It's not heavily fragranced either, which again, I like. Really rich and it just, it feels very luxurious on your skin. It, my skin really feels like it's had a big drink after all that. It feels like plump and like it's got some elasticity to it. Yeah, I'd say that feels good. Sorry for um, <laughs> fondling my face, but yeah my skin is feeling it's got a good good bounce to it i'd say skin is feeling good i'm gonna pop a little bit of spf on uh, i'm still using my ultraviolet spf spf 50 of course okay now my skin routine is complete my skin feels lovely but anyway i'm gonna go and pop some makeup on i've got a couple of bits to film and then i'll be catching up with you because I'm getting all the autumn winter goodies out and I'm putting them in the wardrobe so obviously I'm going to film it. I hope you're ready for a big autumn winter fashion show. That's all I can say. The time has come. It's that time of year when it's time to switch my wardrobe over. Some of the stuff in here um, is already kind of autumn winter. Some of the stuff that I tend to reach for all year round um living in the uk for those of you that don't live in the uk the uk weather is pretty um <laughs> pretty rubbish most of the year round so yeah we tend to have to keep a fair few coats and jackets down 24 7. now a few questions i do get whenever i mention doing this or mention it on instagram uh one question is what if we get a random hot day what are you gonna wear Honestly, guys, it's not that deep. It's literally just upstairs. I can pop up and grab something if I'm so desperate and can't possibly make it through the day and have nothing to wear. I'll go up and I can grab something. Or if I decide to go on a holiday, at the minute we have no like summer hot holidays booked for the winter. We only have a very cold holiday booked for the end of November. So at the minute, I don't have any use for my summer clothes. I'd much rather have the slight inconvenience once or twice throughout autumn winter of needing to go upstairs if i need anything rather than having the daily inconvenience of having a wardrobe full of stuff that i am not reaching for for the next probably six months that feels like such a long time but yeah so this is why i do this just so that i know everything in this room is stuff that i am using and stuff that i you know i'm reaching for all the time it it makes getting dressed so much quicker I feel like when I look in here, as I said, everything I am looking at is stuff that I'm going to be wearing. So, so for example, this section here will probably be full of coats by the end of today. At the minute, it's full of 
beautiful holiday summer dresses. So dresses like this, if you watched my vlog a few, um, a couple of weeks ago, I wore this to the Luxury by Leonora event. It's a, such a gorgeous dress from Bernadette, but unfortunately it's going to be going away. What I'll do is before I put anything away, I'll just have another look at it, check that it doesn't need wash, washing or I don't know, isn't damaged or, because some of the stuff admittedly, I also treat this day as a little bit of a time to have a clear out. So if I grab something, I think, you know what, I actually didn't wear that much, if at all, this spring, summer. I'll ask myself if I want to hold on to it. Do I want to send it to charity? Do any of my friends want it? Do I need to get rid of it? So this will just be vacuum packed probably until about April time next year. So see you later, Bernadette. But anyway, I'm just going to get packing away. And then, yeah, I will reconvene with you when the autumn winter stuff is, um, is here. Since I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were on and wild Going all the way until no And then back to real time, Alex. So, present day, I'm over my illness just about, I think. I'm not feeling 100%. I feel like 10 times better than I was, but my body just still feels a little bit exhausted. Um, so yeah, I'm trying not to overdo it. I'm still trying to just treat myself, treat my body very nicely at the minute. So anyway, I thought I'd pick up where I last left this vlog and actually get out my autumn winter coats and show you what I got. And also, just before I do that, you might have noticed a few flowers. Well, my big bouquet of flowers there. I've also got a couple of very nice bottles of rosé champagne, my favourite, in the wine fridge behind me. Not that I've felt well enough to drink it yet, so I'm just saving that one for another day. But yes, I also hit 1 million followers on Instagram. And I can't quite believe it. Like, I genuinely lost for words because that is not a number I thought I would ever ever see on Instagram. When I tell you this time last year, not even this time last year, I remember having a conversation um, with someone r around um, January into the new year. I felt at such a loss with Instagram and I felt just a bit disheartened with it and very down in the dumps with it and not really knowing what direction my sort of page was going in it was yeah it just become a bit stagnant to me and yeah so it was quite hard finding the motivation with it so i'm just over the moon to have hit that number um but yeah so i just wanted to quickly say a very 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 big thank you to all of you guys that follow me on instagram i shall definitely be raising a glass of rose champagne um yeah i'm actually meeting my friend tomorrow and we're gonna um share a nice bottle of something and just have a nice catch up so yes i shall raise a glass to all of you guys but anyway let's finally go upstairs and um let's play dress up let's go and play with some outfits now one thing when it comes to autumn that i am literally obsessed with um and i'm obviously wearing today for this video are the skims loungewear dresses I bought two of these last year. They are the, oh, <laughs> I thought I had another step in me then to walk backwards. Yes, uh, I bought two of these last year and they are so comfortable. I never thought that I would buy into the hype of skims at the time. I always saw people wearing the loungewear dresses and yeah, I thought they looked great, but I didn't get it into, I didn't understand until I got one myself. They are so comfortable. The stretch on these is like no other. They're just really, really great, guys, honestly. Such good dresses. I actually ended up wearing one for um, Christmas Day. So I'll show you my other one that I got. Beige camel colour, almost, like this sandy colour. So the other one that I've got isn't a scoop neck. It's just a round neck. I actually ended up wearing this on Christmas Day to make the Christmas dinner in, and it was so comfortable. But I felt so glam and so nice at the same time. So, 
yes these are the dresses that always come out now at this time of year i will probably end up treating myself to a, another one because now i've seen just how much i actually reach for them when i'm just in the house just can't beat them okay i have got a big pile of coats and jackets in front of me i'm just gonna um point out before i start there is a lot of clothes here in front of me in my defense i am a jackets and coats hoarder some of these coats have been in my wardrobe for years i really struggle i found that i really struggle to have a clear out when it comes to coats i think because they're such a big part of the outfit i always feel like oh, am i gonna miss this if i get rid of it and especially in my job where i'm creating content for a living i like to be able to create as many different looks and ideas and inspirations as, as possible but i'm determined to get rid of a fair few of these hopefully today i'm just going to jump straight in i have also got a bag of kind of like knitwear and jumpers and things but yeah i'm going to jump into the coat starting off with this one this is from this one's from h&m god i've had this for years I think this cost me, it was over £100. I remember thinking at the time, God, this is expensive for H&M. Now H&M has definitely gone up in prices in terms of coats and jackets. This is what I mean about classics never die. There we go, I feel like that's a little bit better. But yeah, it's just that classic colour and shape. Been in my wardrobe for years. Yeah, I can't really get rid of this because there's nothing wrong with it and it is just a great coat. This one isn't going anywhere. If there's something else that I love about the autumn winter, it's an aviator jacket. Now I got this dark brown chocolatey one from Zara. Did I get this last year or the year before? I feel like it's a fairly recent-ish purchase, but oh, look at the collar. Look at the collar when you've got a big chunky scarf, a big jumper. Oh, this is just so cozy. Yeah, I definitely cannot part with this one. Speaking of aviators, I do have another one from Zara as well. I've had this one probably for an extra year. I know I got this one first, then I got my chocolate brown one. This has made up some lovely outfits over the last couple of years. But I don't know if I would perhaps prefer this one if it wasn't as shiny. It's just... I don't know if I'd maybe prefer one in more of a matte material. I don't think I can part with it though. I feel like until I've found one that's even better, I just can't get rid of this one. Because it's just great to have in your wardrobe. So yeah, I'm probably... We're gonna keep this oh my god who remembers <laughs> this coat is just too much i honestly look like bigfoot when i wear this i actually do look like bigfoot that's actually not even an exaggeration i honestly look like a yeti it's so big and fluffy i look like i've just picked up a rug off the floor and put it on <sighs> but i think it's kind of a vibe <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel like with a nice hat or a nice beanie, so a nice knitted dress and some boots. I actually wore this um, Christmas day. I put this on over my Skims dress and walked down to our little country pub for a glass of champagne in the pub on Christmas day. So you can imagine what I probably look like in a little sleepy village trotting down the road in this. <laughs> I just think it's just too fab to get rid of. I have another teddy coat here, just not quite as um, not quite as extravagant in a lovely cream colour. This one's a bit shorter look. This one isn't as full on, but again, this one just it has its moments. I know it's too soon right now, but winter Christmas markets. I've got a trip to Vienna coming up when I know it's going to be freezing cold. These are the big fluffy coats that you want in your wardrobe. These, by the way, were only from H&M. And yeah, so both of them are affordable and they both lasted really well. They're not really like shed or anything like that. So yeah, I'd say they were both a good purchase. Okay, this coat was from Naked. I mean, again, it's a lovely coat, but it's very, very similar to my Zara one. Do we prefer one over the other? This one doesn't look as shiny, but it's also not as big and glamorous around the collar. Which one do we think, guys? Honest opinions. Do we? Because I'm not going to keep both of these. Let me know in the comments. Shall I keep the naked one, which is this, or the first one, the Zara one? Let me know. Okay, this one. Oh, 
I can't remember this jacket. It's not lasted very well. It's like a faux leather chocolate trench. I look like a flasher wearing it now because it looks like I've got nothing on underneath. Um, do we like the faux leather chocolate trench? I think this could be a moment. I think this could be quite nice. Especially for this time of year when you don't quite need a big long... You don't need the long teddy coats, but... I think that's quite nice actually. This is another sort of like trench coat from um, Naked Fashion. I, when I'm trying to get rid of something, I think, would I buy it again? Now, honest answer with this, I'm not gonna lie. No, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't buy a black trench coat now with white details like this, but I also don't wanna get rid of it. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't actively, I don't think I'm ever gonna reach for this though, realistically. I think this is one that I'm going to get rid of. Yep, this one's going. This is another H&M. <laughs> another H&M number. God, H&M are really thriving in my wardrobe. But yes, this is basically like a walking sleeping bag. It is one of the warmest coats for walking the dogs when it's absolutely freezing cold outside. It's just fantastic. It is honestly almost to the floor. It feels like I've wrapped myself up in a duvet. Um, but yeah, this with a lovely scarf, it's fantastic in the winter. So this is a definite keep. I have this kind of oversized fluffy teddy jacket. Yeah, I think this, I'm gonna get rid of this. I don't think I'm gonna reach, reach for this. I think I much prefer the coats rather than the zip up jacket vibe for this. So yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna hold on to this one. Oh my gosh, I've got some of my knitwear from last year. Oh, I've got this one. I loved this jumper so much. Who remembers this? I remember buying this thinking, oh, this is so Christmassy. It's got reindeer on. They're not reindeer, they're llamas. <laughs> Christmas llamas. I can't get rid of this because I just love this jumper. It's so festive and cute. I love wearing this in the run up to Christmas, even though it's llamas and not reindeer. Wow, what was it with me and the festive llamas last year? <laughs> I just love having these kind of sweaters in your wardrobe. Can you really be shoving a big oversized sweater on like this with some leggings and slippers? You just can't, you really, really can't. I think we're good with the llama jumpers. No more llamas this year. Okay, I've also got all of my Beanie hats. Oh, we've got more festive jumpers. I mean, this just screams Boxing Day to me. It's just so festive. I feel like Andy could probably get away with wearing this. It definitely looks like a man's Christmas jumper, but yep. I want to go Christmas shopping. Right, no, I'm not. Right, we're not talking about Christmas again. No more Christmas chat. It's October. Look, I'm Morticia Adams in my long black dress. We're not talking about Christmas. Oh, I've got my um, Jacquemus scarf here, which I love. This looks so gorgeous with like the cream teddy coat. Oh, excited to wear scarves again. Okay, so both of these um, were not in storage. They've been sat in my dressing room all year round. But something else that I really think is worth investing in um, at this time of year are wool blend blazers. So unlike a regular blazer, they are obviously made partially from wool. So they're, they're just a more, you know, they're a thicker, heavier material, higher quality. And I particularly like going for either maybe like a hound's tooth or a check. Both of these are hound's tooth. This is a bigger print. So both of these are from Mango. This one is sort of like a traditional brown and black uh, hound's tooth, and then this one is the black and grey. I always get asked where these are from. Honestly, I've just found the best place to get these from um, has been Mango. Yes, if you have spotted these blazers, and I will probably be wearing them quite a lot now, that's my go-to for where I get them from. I love the fit of this, um, not with this dress, I love the fit of the mango ones. I always find they're really nice on the shoulders on me. They're not too oversized, but they are just oversized enough. Yeah, really love these. I was just making a pile of my coats ready to put away. I left the room for two minutes 
and these two have decided they quite fancy this pile of coats as their new bed. Are you cosy, sir? Mm, would you like me to fetch you a pipe and slippers? Are you quite cosy? Are you quite cosy there, sir? <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad. <laughs> so cute. Are you cosy? Your sister hasn't even looked up at me. Oh, darling, you are just the cutest, sweetest boy. Look at those chops. Look at that chops. Oh. The problem with having dogs that literally know your whole world revolves around them is that they genuinely think everything you do in life is for them. And I've been making two piles down here of just like the keep and the get rid of. And the dogs don't see it that way. The dogs see it as, oh my God, wow, what, like the kind human has made two big <laughs> beds for us. I, we love these new beds. And now they're both fast asleep, snoring away, haven't got the heart to move them. They look so cosy, honestly. <laughs> Who's going to tell them? Because I'm not. Yes, I had this from Mango. It's just a very simple grey um, wool blend with a tie waist. You can tell it's been in storage. It looks a bit creased now, but I absolutely love it. I love the sleeves on it with the little um, button detail. As I said, I had this from Mango years ago. What's in the pocket? Oh my God, a tiny pair of earrings in the pocket. When did I take those out? Great. They've been sat in there for over six months. Oh, sorry little guys, forgot about you. One of my most reach, reached for jackets. It's just stunning. I really do love this coat. Okay, this might be one for the get rid pile. Think. My problem is I look at them on the floor and then I put them on and I sell them to myself again. Oh, I remember wearing this around London. It's basically like a longer version of my aviator jacket. Do you think I just kind of look like a wheeler dealer? I feel like I might look a bit like Del Boy in this. I'm not sure if the long version is very me anymore. I mean, it's, it's a nice coat, but I don't know if I like the sleeves. I feel like the sleeves are giving Mrs. Claus. I think I might have to let me know on this one. This one's a definite go. I actually remember seeing this in my wardrobe a few months ago. Not in my wardrobe, in the storage a few months ago and thinking, I don't need that jacket in my life. Like, that can go. Let's put it on. Let's see. Do I? Yeah, I just think the quality. Of the, I, I love the look of it. I actually think the look of it is actually quite cute it could definitely um look nice with a few outfits but the quality isn't there it's actually so thin and flimsy like it's or is it one that i just hold on to until i see a maybe a better quality version you know because i feel like if this was a thicker you know, I don't know no no i think this one's gonna go this is my cream coat from fourth and reckless Oh, now this coat is like a dressing gown. It's not the most practical coat in the world because it is cream and it does 100% give dressing gown vibes. I don't care. Maybe um, a nice cream coat would be um, maybe on my wish list for this year. For anyone wondering, I know people will ask, I'm not selling any of this, so no, I don't have like Depop or Vintage or anything like that. I'm not selling any of it. This is all just being donated to charity. And then I always get comments going, which charity shops do you donate to? Um, yeah, so this is just going to the charity shops, guys. I don't sell any of this, but I'm sure I'll have a couple of my friends around before I get a chance to go to the charity shop. And they always have a little route around to see if there's anything that they like. I bet a couple of those coats will get snapped up. So I was just um, thinking about what to put on my shelves. I like to usually have my, I'd say my most, most worn bags on this shelf. The one, the bags I'm reaching for the most, the most wearable. Um, the reason I started doing the shelves is because I have another bag that I'm going to unbox with you and add, add on to my little collection. I do have other bags. I tend to put them on the shelves at the top, as I said, this is just for my most sort of 
reached for bags. I don't actually have that many bags. Um, I've been asked a couple of times on sort of Instagram and TikTok to do a like handbag collection video. Guys, genuinely, I don't know who you think I am. I do not have a big collection of handbags. I'm not someone that has shelves and shelves of Chanel and like, I just don't. I don't have Hermes and I don't have any. It's just not my, <laughs> I was just gonna say, it's just not my bag, literally. It's just not where I get excited to spend my money. I don't have handbags, I have a horse. <laughs> and we'll leave it there, shall we? Sometimes I do fantasise about the car that I could drive, maybe, if I didn't have a horse. <laughs> but no, honestly guys, it's just, it just, I love bags, I appreciate bags, but they don't excite me. My bags always tend to be, I'll have the odd little treat. My Fendi was a treat for me. Anyway. I wanted to show you this bag that I was very kindly sent, I will say. Oh, I did not purchase this, but the girl that makes these bags, or rather the business owner of this bag, she got in touch with me. So she's a small business owner. She created this brand, um, Charlotte Elizabeth, via the Prince's Trust. So they support um, a lot of small businesses, particularly women. And anyway, she got in touch with me and said that she thinks that you know, her brand, her business is quite in line with my style. And would I like to have one of her bags? No obligation, she hasn't asked me to show you any of this. She has literally just offered this to me and if I like it, maybe I can show you. But guys, I love it, okay? So this is the bag from Charlotte Elizabeth. I'm gonna just zoom you in there just so you can see the detail there. I need to take the plastic off um, off these. This is literally an unboxing. I adore colour of this and the size of it is just perfect. So inside it has got a strap that I am going to attach on. Big enough for my vlogging camera, the most important thing. And I love the fact that it's got a top handle but I think this will look amazing crossbody wearing this in the autumn winter with cream, cream knit dresses, beige, like jumpers. It's the tan bag that I just didn't have. Now I have looked at like designer versions of tan handbags. I've been very tempted by some, but to be honest, I feel like this bag has kind of like scratched that itch for me and I won't be in any rush to make a purchase because I think this is just gorgeous. So I think I'm going to pop my Charlotte Elizabeth bag up here. That looks quite nice there, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks very nice. So while I was ill, I, um, I had a fair few bits and bobs arrive. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna sit down and just unbox everything with you, but I did want to show you one thing in particular that arrived because <sighs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I know, I'm so excited for it literally ridiculous reasons but anyway I got sent the Space NK Beauty Christmas calendar this oh, this is a good one what I will say is I never I never know what how much to show you of advent calendars because I don't want to spoil the surprise but equally I know that not all of you will have this calendar not all of you are interested in the calendar but are nosy to see what's in it and some of you guys want to see what's in it to know if it's worth buying. So what I will say is, if you don't want spoilers, skip. I need you to skip because I need to show you some of the bits in here because this is a good one. Straight off the bat, day two. I'm gonna jump in with day two. Olaplex, day two of an advent calendar. Olaplex the number four and number five. Look, in an advent calendar, while we're here, number three. I'm not gonna do all of these, by the way, guys, don't worry, but I've done number two, so I'm just gonna do number three. Ooh, is that Charlotte Tilbury? It's a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette. God, I'm just gonna open this because I want to see which palette this actually is. I'm very curious. So I'm gonna say this very, as diplomatically as I can. You know some advent calendars, I'm not going to call any out, but you know how you can just tell some brands put together an advent calendar to get rid of stock that they can't shift and it's rubbish. It's the rubbish version of everything. Look at this eyeshadow palette. It is literally the most best-selling classic Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette that you can get. 
I love this already. Should we open another one? I really want to see what's in the last one. Is there 24 or 25? Oh, there is. There's 25. Should we open 25? I've got a little book here that tells me what's in here. What else is there? Oh my God. Drunk Elephant, Sunday Riley, Hourglass, Rare Beauty. Oh, I was about to say, I would be buzzing if I had this. I, ha I do have this. I would be buzzing if somebody got me this. Even if you just wanted to buy this for yourself, you know, just to try loads and loads of products. And then any that you didn't want or, you know, pop them in people's stockings. Such good little stocking fillers. I know I'm so sad, getting so excited over an advent calendar, but this is just flipping brilliant. Right, let's open number 25 because I am getting far too excited. <laughs> oh, it says on the box, have yourself a cosy Christmas. I will. I will, thank you. Oh my god, is that a candle? Boy smells. I hope it's the nice kind of smells. I can actually smell it through the box. This smells really woody and really smoky. It smells like a fire that's just gone out <laughs> in the nicest possible way. A gorgeous little candle. Look at that. Really good, guys, really good. If you are in the market, I genuinely recommend. I feel like this is a really good calendar i am buzzing buzzing with that let me know do you guys like a beauty advent calendar or are you all about the chocolate i mean before opening that i would have said i'm all about the chocolate but that is pretty good i'd be pretty happy every morning opening a box of those goodies very impressed just being completely transparent they've not asked me to show you it um i don't get any i'm not paid to tell you about it I will just link it in the description box for you in case you're interested. Um, but yeah, check it out. Blinking fantastic. Everything has been filed away in the wardrobe. And this is what it's looking like. The only thing I'm not very happy with is the top shelves. They look a little bit cluttered. I feel like I could probably stack everything a little bit neater. But to be honest, guys, this took a lot longer than I thought it would. And yeah, I got to that point where I was like, oh my God, just shove things <laughs> shove things away but yeah this is how how it's looking right now nice neat tidy dressing room with all the autumn goodies in here now over here i have popped all of my sort of short jackets and coats i've tried to have as you can see a little bit of color coordination so i've got my blacks and blues and then my more neutral brown sort of creams over here Top shelf, I've got my hats and beanies. I've got my scarves up there. I was contemplating putting some knitwear in um, in these shelves, but I have actually got so much drawer space that it really wasn't needed. So I've decided just to keep things how they were before. I've just popped my sort of most reached for bags in there. Bottom here, I have got my trousers, jeans, again, colour coordinated I've popped all of my blues together here and then I've got my black neutral just everything else there again try to do a little bit of colour coordination just so that it looks just looks quite visually pleasing in this corner the hanging space I have obviously just popped all of my long hanging jackets so they're all nice and snug in there down here um, it's kind of like my hiding space. I've just popped my big carry-on um, bag and just a few boots hiding back there. And then this space, I have kept it so that my blazers are here. Again, colour coordinated. And then round here, I, like I said, I didn't really know what to do here. So this is literally an I don't know area still. And I think it'll probably stay that way, to be honest. It's still th stuff that I reach for sort of like shirts, the odd odd um, cardigan, things like that. But yeah, I just wanted, I wanted to still fill this hanging space up with some things. Um, and then the drawers haven't really changed, to be honest. They're just looking pretty much the same. I've got, you know, my knitwear and things like that in these drawers. And then just ignoring my ring light there, I've popped my boots and shoes in here as well however in terms of the dressing room i would say that is a job well done really pleased with how this is looking 